Hey everyone, welcome to the March Fragrance Awards. If you are newer to my channel, welcome. And this is the series that I do to share my thoughts on fragrances that I've wore over the past month. And they're in these made up categories that came out of my brain just for entertainment purposes. There is a full playlist of all of these videos dating back to the first one down in the description box if you're interested in binge watching this content. We'll start off with best for the season. And I'm in central Virginia. The weather here can be chaotic. It can be really cool and chilly one day like down in the 40s and 50s and the next day be in the 70s and 80s so I wanted to choose a fragrance that was versatile for both types of weather would behave well in warm and cold weather and this is a newer one to my collection that I quickly came to love and nearly put into my masterpiece fragrances video but it was new and it felt just wrong to call it a masterpiece just yet uh, as I was continuing to enjoy it and get to know it and that is from Zerzhov and it's Herba Gold which we all believe is a flanker to Herba Pura. So what I get most out of this fragrance is like a melon smell with citrus and musk and amber and some sort of sweet vanilla tones. And what I mean by melon, I'm thinking of like honeydew specifically, cantaloupe. Imagine a fruit salad that had those as primary players, perhaps with a little bit of watermelon and then some orange pieces and some mandarin and other bits and pieces, maybe some other types of fruit as well. But the primary sniff coming out of the bowl, the primary scent are those melon tones. That is really prominent here at the top. This is for me a very juicy fragrance with a lot of presence that I think is really versatile for all four seasons. But since we're here at the beginning of spring and you get that sort of warm weather one day and cool weather another day, this is a really great player for this time of year in particular. As it begins to settle down, you do get a little bit of spiciness. And further deep into the dry down, there is a really soft, gentle, woody backbone to the fragrance, but it pri primarily stays a melony, fruity, citrusy, musky type of deal. I love this. I think it is unisex leaning feminine. And I've worn this a few times now, and each time I've gotten really great projection and really great longevity and compliments from the very picky people in my house. I really, really enjoy this. I think it is a fantastic fragrance, very nicely composed. In the category of best everyday fragrance, listen, I said in a recent video that I'm very interested in bringing basic back, meaning giving some dignity to the fragrances that are called everyday, boring, basic, and that people sort of shun and push off to the side in favor of all of the new shiny fragrance pennies that are coming out on the market. So when you think about an everyday fragrance, for me, it's something that you can wear anywhere that's pretty versatile, that's non-offensive, that you can run errands with, pick up your kids in the car line, hang out with your friends, go to family occasions, something just simple and easygoing, like your white t-shirt type of fragrance. I gotta give it up for good old Prada candy. I realize that people don't really talk about this line of fragrances anymore. There are lots of these sort of beautiful, soft, musky, powdery, your skin, but better types of fragrances out on the market now that are getting a lot of attention. But I still think this is a great one. And as you can see, I've made my way through quite a lot of this. So this is primarily known to be a caramel fragrance, like a really soft caramel. I can't say that for me, this is deeply in the caramel direction. There is a little bit of that sort of sweetness to it that you might get from caramel candy. For me, this is a soft skin scent in the musky direction with touches of powderiness. I wouldn't call it a largely powdery fragrance. There is a little bit of that, but for me, it's a soft, sweet musk that makes you feel like you're freshly showered, but the shower scent has come off of you and your skin is starting to emit sort of this natural sweetness to it. There's vanilla in the fragrance as well. I do think this is a particularly feminine fragrance and it is very close to the skin and moderately lasting. You may want to to re up on this fragrance. It's the type of fragrance where you can just spray away head to toe, spray all of your clothing, spray your skin down, the whole bit. And you really won't offend anyone, but you will smell pleasant and you will smell feminine. I like this. In fact, I kind of like the whole Prada candy line, all of the flankers. And so, you know, if you want one of those sort of old classic fragrances, I, mean, I guess this is old considering all of the the deluge of new releases that we have been bombarded with in the past few years. When, did, when was this released? Let's take a look. Hold on a minute, y'all. Gosh, this was released back in 2011, 2011. So <laughs> I guess this is considered an older fragrance compared to some of the you know, newer releases of the past maybe few years. Anywho, get your nose on this whole line if you're interested in subtle but effective fragrances in terms of making you feel pretty and put together and pleasant smelling. Nothing wrong with a good old day-to-day -day pleasant smelling fragrance, and this is a great go-to for that.
In the category of special occasion, and when I think of special occasion, I think of dressed up. And to me, it doesn't really matter where you're headed when we're talking about special occasion. I mean, you can define what special occasion means, a night out on the town, an evening, a fair, a party, something like that where you really want your scent to stand out from your normal day-to-day -day wear. This is a fragrance that every time I wear it, I get sort of a different nuance of it and a different appreciation for what it offers. And this is called Ortanen by Tiziana Terenzi in this absolutely gorgeous hand-blown bottle. I've shared that I really enjoy this bottle shape from the line. I like all of their bottles, but in particular, this bottle shape is very attractive to me, both the black Comet line and this one. Primarily, and this is something that I pick up every single time I wear this, this is a woody fragrance. There's an agarwood note and also sandalwood that are the woody nuances in here. And then on occasion, I'll get what other people pick up as the most prominent note, which is something in the caramel direction, not edible gourmand caramel, almost like a perfumey interpretation of what caramel would smell like if it were a perfume note, which it is in here. <laughs> <laughs> so don't think about like caramel that melts in your mouth. Think about like some artistic interpretation of the scent of caramel. And then on occasion, I will pick up other notes in here, like the rose that is supposed to also be a key player, citrus, and then on occasion, some yellow floral. More than anything, a, a really lovely woody fragrance. This is one that must be worn on skin to be appreciated. And by the way, so does Herba Gold. Like this one really shines as it warms up on your skin and is just amazing. Whereas a fragrance like Prada candy, you can just spray all over your clothes and never put on your skin and still get a really nice scent out of this. This one to me performs best when it has the natural heat of your skin to help it come alive. You know, so smelling on a tester blotter is really just not going to give you the right experience. But I do think it is just such a soft, easygoing, woody fragrance. There are some nice, soft, ambery touches in here. There's a little bit of spiciness from like a pepper note. And then on occasion, like I said, it'll vacillate between smelling a little bit like artistic caramel and a little bit like rose. Really intriguing fragrance, one that when I first purchased it, I thought was just okay. And the more I wear it, the more I sort of understand the beauty that it is. So Wartanen is my special occasion fragrance for standing out from the crowd. For my sexiest fragrance of the month, and there was a lot of competition <laughs> for sexiest. Look, have we forgotten about the Olympia line? Have we shunned it in favor of all of the new beauties out on the market? This is one that has really stood the test of time for me. I ended up selling my Olympia Intense. I liked it, but you know, I have this rule where as something comes in, something has to go out because I don't have any more room on my shelves. <laughs> this one has maintained her place. She comes every night to the island of Fragrance Survivor and she puts her torch down and dares someone to push her out of her spot on the shelf. <laughs> this is Olimpea Legend from Paco Rabanne. Friends, when I tell you that this is probably one of the sexiest fragrances in my collection in such an effortless way, my description of this fragrance is that it is like fruity, creamy ice cream ice cream with fragrance sprinkled on top, like some pretty perfume on top of that. This is such a highly feminine, delightful vanilla with stone fruits and tonka bean and amber. If you look up the notes, it says that it's supposed to be salty. I can't tell you that I smell salt in this fragrance. I just can't like the salt have a smell. Yes. I mean, the, the, it's like a salty texture to a fragrance, but I don't get that here. I get all perfumey almost in the gourmand direction because those stone fruits are so pronounced in the fragrance along with this creaminess. I could douse myself in this. You don't need to. A few sprays takes you a long way and this has great longevity and great projection off of you. Very much a crowd pleaser and hubby loves this so I enjoy wearing it for him. The biggest surprise is actually like a whole line of fragrances that I have in more recent months really taken a strong liking to and think I want to collect more from. I have three so far. I started off, this is Kate Spade. I started off with Sparkle, which I think is fantastic in the blue bottle. And I bought this one blindly as I was putting in an Ulta order, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it is Kate Spade Bloom in this really nice bottle. And then I also ordered just the original Kate Spade upon sampling that because it is gorgeous as well. And so I really enjoy these bottle shapes. I enjoy the sort of spade at the top that is the symbol of the brand. And I like that these are very elegant and girly and also simple like this could have been this almost made it as the everyday fragrance instead of product candy although this is a little bit more casual even than this one bloom is very much under 
inserted by woody nuances. Sandalwood and cedarwood are some of the base notes. And then on top of that is this nice, very easy going, very thin and wispy white floral accord. If you're not into white florals, I wouldn't say that the white florals are very sort of pronounced and in your face and kind of cloying and headache inducing as some people tend to associate with white floral notes. It is a very light wispy white floral texture in here alongside an apple and lemon note to add some brightness. When I think about how those two notes probably play together to give a bright uplifting feeling to this fragrance, then I get it. Although there isn't musk listed as a note for this, I feel like this is also musky. In fact, I might primarily call it a musk forward fragrance and a very watery musk. I think of this fragrance as being as watery as the fluid looks in here. But this was nicely wearing, enjoyed here in this house by many. It's just soft. It's soft. It's delicate. It's girly. I wouldn't call it sweet, but I would call it like floral, slightly uplifting, fresh, crisp, fruity with the background of woodiness to it. This is really delightful and very easy wearing as well. And relatively inexpensive considering the astronomical prices <laughs> on fragrances these days. This entire bottle I think was $90 or so on Ulta. Fantastic. And I think it's probably even less on Joma Shop. I will link all of the fragrances that I talk about in this video down below if I can find them. And just know there's probably going to be a couple of sets of links. Some of them are through YouTube. And those are for the most part, not always, but for the most part to traditional sort of retail sites like Saks Fifth Avenue and Macy's and Bloomingdale's. And I put those there because a lot of folks like to shop through that for their points or rewards or out of comfort, or they have a credit card with them or whatever. And then down in the description box, you will see the name of the fragrance and underneath that a shopping link that maybe will provide you a different choice if you want to look at different options. So check that all out. In the category of best bottle, and maybe it isn't actually the best bottle from the month, but it's one that I want to talk about because I appreciate the shape and design of these bottles. I did pick this up during the February So Avant Garde sale that I did with them for 30% off. And this is Shanghai. And the entire like city collection from this house, they all have the same bottle shape, but different colors and then different designs on the cap to capture, you know, whatever iconic symbolism they wanted to share with the city name. I was pleasantly surprised by this fragrance. When I first sniffed it and first put it on a blotter when it arrived, I was like, okay, that's, you know, just a nice sort of soft floral fragrance. Okay, not a big deal, nothing special. And then I wore it and got compliments on it and thought, oh, maybe I smell really nice. <laughs> and I kept getting these wafts of this bright, happy, very crisp and clean floral fragrance, but very subtle. So some of the key notes here are peony, which I love the scent of peony in fragrances. It's almost like a cousin to a rose note, like a soft baby rose note in that peony can be soft and subtle and delicate. And it smells like the color, whatever you imagine the color pink to smell like that's what peony smells like to me, like a fresh pink note. <laughs> and so that's mostly what you get at the top with um, a musky undertone. But as this begins to settle down, there's a, a very nice subtle tea note combined with a pear, a sweet pear, very thin fruity nuance in the fragrance that plays alongside that peony as the fragrance begins to develop. And it's just, it's super pleasant to the nose. It's easygoing and it's bright and it's fresh and it's fun and it's great for springtime. Very easy wearing, and I, but I just enjoyed the bottle. That's what this category is about is the shape of the bottle and the fact that there was some effort put into an artistic interpretation here, some depiction of what the fragrance should evoke for you. Really neat, really bright, fresh, floral fragrance, easy going, easy day to day. Another one that could have competed with Prada for an everyday type of scent. Next then naturally is Worst Bottle. And so Oh, I gotta be fair to what this fragrance smells like, but I also just need to be honest that this bottle doesn't do the fragrance justice. This is Steamed Rainbow from DS and Durga. I mean, and this was gifted to me by Twisted Lily. So thank you, Twisted Lily. I shared that in a previous video. You see how much of this I went through and I'll share with you why I went through that much in a bit. Do I like this fragrance? Absolutely. This is one of the most memory evoking or image evoking fragrances that I've tried in like a very long time. It's called Seamed Rainbow. So let me tell you what the fragrance smells like and then I'll tell you why this bottle is just not right for this. It is not right. Somebody did this fragrance wrong. This smells to me like a fresh waterfall is my description. So here's the scene. You're walking up on a waterfall after a hike. 
there is that sort of wet mist in the air that you start to feel on you as you approach the waterfall. And that mist is very refreshing. It's just like you've reached Shangri-La, you know, <laughs> and the, the woods part. And there's the sort of basin around the waterfall that just hearkens you to, you know, dive in. But the air is filled with that beautiful, refreshing, lovely, like you just welcome that mist after a long hike. There are maybe mandarins getting peeled nearby. There's a tiny bit of sort of grassy vegetal scent in the distance, but there's just this refreshing feel to the experience that is captured in this fragrance. I really appreciate that about this and think it is unique. Ah, it just, it takes me there mentally. So the reason that I went through, gosh, I'm approaching half of the fragrance being used in just a couple of wares, because you kind of have to douse yourself in this to continue to experience it for a long period of time. It is a fairly fleeting fragrance. You may get a few hours out of it if you're lucky in terms of being able to smell it on yourself. I think your skin will be able to continue to smell nice for a long period of time. But in terms of smelling it on yourself, you know, you're going to have to re-up after, I don't know, somewhere between the two to four hour range, somewhere in there. And so I ended up spraying a lot. And the best part of this to me, it's lovely throughout its short wear, but the very best part is that opening phase, the first like 30 minutes or so where, yeah, you just get this gorgeous, relieving, alleviating, stress alleviating <laughs> scent. And for that to be such a beautiful scent experience, although short-lived, why do we have such a boring bottle? Can someone please help me understand? Yes, I know that all of the DS and Durga bottles have this shape. This is a smaller one, obviously they come bigger, but could somebody have done something a little bit different with the label than like, you know, your 1980s holographic gem, truly outrageous, who remembers that cartoon type of label? So that's all I have to say about that. We could have done better by Steamed Rainbow. We did this fragrance wrong. <laughs> In the category of favorite blind buy, gosh, there was a lot of competition for this category too. I have to give it to this beauty from Shantakai, which I talked about in my white florals video. Please do check that out if you are a white floral lover. And thank you to the several of you who shared the pronunciation upon my request. I asked for some support on how to pronounce this name. It is Petal. Petal. This fragrance Ooh, we, I mean, you have to be a white floral fragrance lover to really enjoy the magnificent beauty that this is. This is that glorious trifecta of tuberose and gardenia and jasmine. There's a little bit of amber and woodiness in the fragrance too, to serve as sort of a backbone, but those florals are the star player. And this wears so nicely. The Shantakai fragrances in general, this is two of three spoiler alert, you see the cap back there? I did pick up Le Wild, which I talked about in the White Florals video. And I'll share that in an upcoming video about newer fragrances that I've been testing out back there. Beautiful. This is as beautiful as the most amazing white floral fragrance that you've ever tried. It is an absolutely fantastic creation. It is not the longest lasting. I maybe got moderate longevity. And by that, I mean like in the four-ish hour range or so before it starts to really soften up. But it is really, really beautiful. Loved in this house. I got lots of compliments uh, between the second and the first floor of my house. <laughs> I didn't go out with this. What did I go out with this one on? I don't remember. I think I just wore it in the house and I can't get enough of sniffing this. This is one that I really enjoy just sort of lifting off of my shelf and sniffing as I am preparing in the morning or unwinding at night. Absolutely beautiful and worth every penny. Pay tall. In the category of not a safe blind buy, the jewelry is still out on this fragrance for me. I think I pretty much like the scent profile. I am not sure how I really feel about keeping this fragrance long term. So let's talk about it, friends. <laughs> this is from Sospiro and this is Contralto which has gotten a lot of hype here on YouTube. I knew what I was getting myself into when I purchased it and I did it anyway. What I'm saying is that it was said to smell like Baldafrique from Byredo, which I have tried before and sort of enjoyed, but didn't know if I enjoyed it enough to purchase a full bottle. I know that people really rave about that fragrance and like swear by it as the perfect day-to-day -day office type of scent. I do think that Contralto is very similar to that. What I appreciate about this fragrance is that I feel like this has a little bit of a sweet nuance, very, very subtle that I didn't pick up in Balde Freak, at least the time that I tried it. And that was years ago at this point, to be fair. So a lot of people talk about this smelling clean and woody and fresh. 
And I think there is that, but there is a complexity to this fragrance that I don't think a lot of other reviewers have talked about that I pick up. So it is woody and I do pick up a lot of sort of almost like herbal aromatic tones. And I'm talking about like savory herbs. There is a hint of spiciness in here. It's not an overpowering spice by any means and definitely woodiness. So I want to play with this some more. I did give it a full day wear and it was one of those fragrances where I kept saying to myself, I'm not sure if this feels like me. Like if I feel totally comfortable wearing the fragrance. That said, I do like to give fragrances several tries. And so I'm hopeful that this will continue to sort of grow on me. And if it doesn't, it may perhaps be making its way out of the door. I will let y'all know and keep you posted. If you have tried Contralto, let me know. By the way, I do think it is a fabulous fragrance. Just because a fragrance is not necessarily for me doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the beauty that it is. So let's be clear about that. This is a lovely fragrance. I'm just not entirely sure if I feel like my best self in it. Does that make sense? So with that, let us give this at least another full day wear before we, meaning I, <laughs> make a decision on what I think about Contrato. Next in the category of overhyped is one that, you know, some of y'all may want to clutch those pearls now. <laughs> and by the way, I really, really enjoyed this fragrance. I'm talking about Lyra from Zerzhov. And let me, let me, let me explain myself. So I do enjoy this fragrance. I like to wear it. I think that what has happened is there are other fragrances like this that have come on the market recently that offer this fragrance a lot of competition. And perhaps for a while, it was either, I wouldn't say the only one of its kind, but the one that was getting attention for being the one of its kind. So like this lemony, citrusy, vanilla, ethereal, light, fluffy fragrance. I like a lot about this fragrance. First of all, the bottle I think is absolutely pretty. Look at the, look at the little lady on there. Isn't that cute? <laughs> love the tassel, love the whole like Zerge off bottle experience. So a lot of people experience this as a very light wearing fragrance. And some people complain that this doesn't have longevity. I get moderate longevity out of this. I wouldn't say it's like an all day stunning fragrance. I get some nice moderate longevity. I do think that this is a fairly intimate wear. When you first spray it on, it does give a nice scent bubble. That scent bubble becomes very close and intimate after a short while. It is lovely. It is lovely and light, whimsical even. Some people said this smells like Christmas to them. I can see that like the citrusy aspects of Christmas environments or Christmas candles that have citrus and maybe like cloves and those types of maybe cinnamon in the, the spices or whatever. I appreciate this fragrance for what it is. It is like this cloud-like, fluffy, lemony, vanilla, maybe nuances of orange. This isn't the most gourmand of fragrances for me though. It's not like heavily in the sweet edible direction. And the reason that I have it in the overhyped category is I think it is lovely, but the way that people go bananas over this fragrance is maybe a bit much in my opinion. Again, just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy this fragrance very much and don't plan to keep my bottle and wear it a lot. I do, I do. But it got 10 tons of attention and continues to get a whole ton of attention, even though there's a lot of sort of competition for this. So maybe a little bit overhyped, maybe not, you might disagree. In the hidden gem category, for those of you that like a subtle but impactful fragrance, and you're not afraid of a really unisex fragrance, maybe with some masculine touches to it, Kalahari from Noem is gorgeous. For me, this is mostly a spicy and woody fragrance, and but it's in a very sort of restrained, restricted, restrained, subtle way that makes it a very easy wearing fragrance for day to day and for work in particular. I could see this under a suit. I could see this under a dress for a lady that wanted to present as having sort of a put together personality who behaved in very sort of linear ways, follow the rules, <laughs> but wanted just a little bit of edge on her scent, if you will, as her scent. So cedarwood and cardamom as the primary spice that I pick up a hint, a very small hint of incense far in the background and a very soft, almost sweet muskiness. I wouldn't call it a sweet fragrance, but the musky note in here does have a little bit of sweetness to me, but primarily very softly woody and gently spiced fragrance that is easy to wear. This is for the subdued person that wants to have a minimalist type of fragrance on, but still smell nice and clean and structured. This is a very structured fragrance. For me, it is a soft wearing closer to the skin type of deal, maybe even skin scent ish. Do I have this in my skin scent video? I don't even remember. I recorded that a bit back and I need to go ahead and edit that and post it. By the way, I have a skin scent video coming up. I have a musk video coming up. 
an iris video and a bunch more fun stuff for late spring and then we get to get into all of those fun summer fragrances Woohoo! <laughs> So soft wearing to the skin and moderate longevity. You will not offend anyone with this fragrance, but you will smell distinct and different. In the newer category of worth hunting down, this one is mega pricey. So I'm going to see if it's still out on FragranceNet where I purchased it for a lot less than it retails for. And this is a beauty. It is subtle and soft wearing and not long lasting. So I just want to be clear. This is one that you are going to splurge on just because you enjoy the scent, not for performance. Okay, so if you need performance, if you're that person that's like, if I'm gonna spend over a certain amount, it's gotta perform, it's gotta project, this ain't the one for you. Just go on and skip ahead to the next fragrance. But for those of you that don't mind a beautiful fragrance at a pricey price point <laughs> because you enjoy certain scents, Santal Basmati from Affinescence is a joy, a joy. This is one of those Fragrances that immediately takes you somewhere. It, it transports you. It brings up memories. This is a soft, almost creamy sandalwood. Well, maybe some people will call it milky, like a thinner, milky consistency. It has a little bit of creaminess for me, like it's a little bit stronger and deeper and thicker than just milky. But one of the most delightful sandalwoods that I've ever smelled. And the other thing that characterizes this fragrance is this strong basmati note. So if you think about rice, basmati rice in particular, as you're cooking it, the really sort of light, almost like paper smelling, musky-ish kind of vapor that comes up from basmati rice as you're cooking it. It has also this subtle sweetness. Like imagine sweet, musky paper. <laughs> That's a little bit what basmati smells like to me alongside that sandalwood. This is so nicely like just leaning into feminine territory that I think could be worn by anyone. Okay, it's not like girly and it's definitely not masculine. Oh, so delightful. One of those that you want to keep sniffing yourself and spraying more of, but pricey. Worth hunting down though. If I can find it on FragranceNet because that's the only place I've seen it at a reasonable price, I will link it for you below. Not reasonable, excuse me, it's still pricey on fragrance net. Let's talk next about the fragrances that are in the low, medium, and high category. I do have one low today. And so here's the thing about this next fragrance. Hang on to your tomatoes, water balloons, and other things you throw at people that you want to heckle. <laughs> I know that this is beloved out here in the fragrance community. I did happen to pick this one up on sale, and it is in my skin sense video because I think a lot of you would like this. For me, I just happen to feel maybe a little bit uninspired when I wear it. That doesn't make it a fragrance that I don't think is worth looking at, sniffing, trying out. It is Le Papier from Diptyque. What a cute bottle. I do enjoy the Diptyque uh, bottle designs, especially that they all have a little bit of unique artwork on the front. And also if you turn it around and look through the glass on the, the backside. So this fragrance has been described as smelling like fresh paper that comes out of a printer. I get a little bit of that. And there's also this sort of soft, almost sweet muskiness to this. I don't find it quite sweet like skin from Clean Reserve, for example. I find this just shy of being sweet, but in that direction, okay? I do think that this has a tiny bit, a tiny bit of that smell that skin might get as you start to get a tiny bit stale for the day, you know what I'm saying? Like your personal body odor. <laughs> Some of you might like that. So I would describe this as a very pale woody scent, very pale. I mean, like if you think about colors of wood and you think about like blonde woods as being the lightest color of wood, imagine even a shade up from that, like almost like a, a creamy wood, a bleached wood. Remember that, remember pickled cabinets? Who's old enough to remember? when pickle cabinets were something that people could actually pick out in their new house design. <laughs> that wood that was almost slightly like creamy pink color. You know what I mean? This, was, this would be that, like that type of the smell that that color evokes. Yeah, with a little bit of muskiness. And like I said, that slight like sweat dried down on skin kind of smell. And some people may really love that. I can see the appeal of this for people that want those sort of very, very minimal fragrances. But I do think that there are, for me, in my opinion, skin scents that I prefer more than this. So there it is. It will show up in my skin scent video, I believe. I didn't edit that yet. Maybe it won't make it in. <laughs> Maybe I'll keep it in. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, low for me, low. Oh, and the reason that I went through so much of this is because I kept spritzing it on trying to understand what the overhype mass appeal of this fragrance is. 
That said, look, if you like a, a fragrance that smells like, I know what it smells like. I know what it smells like. Y'all ready? Wet toilet paper, unused, unused. As a kid, did you ever like ball up, like grab toilet paper off of the roll, ball it up and wet it and like throw it at your siblings? <laughs> we played stupid games like that when we were kids. This smells like clean, wet toilet paper or maybe like a clean kitchen paper towel. Same idea, same idea. In the medium category, I have two quite lovely fragrances I wanna share with you why they're medium and then we'll get to my top faves of the month. Some of which are actually in the other categories, but we have to reserve different ones for the top faves. In the medium category, Stilettos on Lex from Dula Mod. When I sampled it, I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is the clean, like musky, fruity fragrance of my dreams. And I don't mean fruity like this. Like this is strongly fruity. This is a very subtle, underripe fruit fruity. Okay, like clean. I would describe this as having a very sort of slight woody base, very clean and fresh smelling. And at the same time, slightly powdery. It has a little bit of sort of cold crispness from these purple flower notes and a light, delicate pear and vanilla running through it to add just like that touch of sweetness. I like the name. I like Stilettos on Lex. Am I thinking right that that's Lexington Avenue in New York? I'm not sure. Maybe there's a Lex somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy the feeling that I think I'm supposed to get from this, which is put together and clean maybe even like a little bit of a preppy vibe. Who remembers Laura Ashley? Remember that line of clothing? Are people still wearing Laura Ashley, like the floral dresses? I didn't wear them, but I had lots of friends that wore that in the late 80s and 90s. It's like, this is the grown up version of <laughs> Laura Ashley. Oh, I know, hold on a second, Lily Pulitzer. Do y'all wear Lily Pulitzer? Put your hand up in the comments if you wear some Lily patterns. This is like a Lily Pulitzer fragrance. It's what you would spritz on over those dresses that kind of thing. If you don't know Lily Pulitzer, look it up. It's really interesting patterns that you either love or absolutely hate. This is Vera Bradley. That whole like crew of ladies that wear those types of things may enjoy this. So I like it. I like it. The reason that it's medium is as I'm wearing it, there comes a point, maybe about three or four hours into the experience where I'm like, I think I'm good with this. Like, can we move on and do something else? I think. But then there's parts of it that I still like. So I'm just sort of on the fence about this. I think there's some really lovely, beautiful aspects of this. I nearly sold this. And then when I wore it in March, I was like, I really like this. I'm feeling groovy, <laughs> feeling Lily Bullets are groovy in my fragrance. And I'm going to step out here in my best cutesy, preppy, floral self. And then I got to this point, like I said, where I was like, all right, what's next with the fragrance experience? So I don't know. We're going to keep it in the collection. She's not leaving, but yeah, that's how I feel. The second fragrance in the middle category. I really like this. I didn't have great reactions to this in my house and I just don't get it because I really like it. It is Daisy Oh So Fresh from Marc Jacobs. Very cute bottle. Primarily pear, strawberry, and honey. Imagine the combination of that. So the strawberry doesn't smell like strawberry. It smells like almost like a soft berry note alongside the sweetness from the pear. You know, pear is just such a beautiful note in fragrances to me, either as a fresh, just ripened pear or one that is almost like, you know, cooked and deep and like sticky, syrupy, sweet pear. Either or here, it feels a little bit more sweet alongside the, I feel like the strawberry adds like a berry freshness, if that makes sense, alongside this fairly sweet honey accord here. There are florals and other notes, but that's really what stands out to me. And I really like this. I think it is pretty dang great. The longevity is moderate. The projection is pretty good when you first wear this. You know, I kind of doused myself in it. So it filled the room and it filled the room for a good long time. And maybe that was the problem. <laughs> My husband was like, it's okay. I kind of like it. That's not a love. I wouldn't be mad if you never wore that again. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought you liked this. So that's the only reason that this is in the middle category. But this is also not going anywhere because I like it. I have entirely too many favorites to share in this high category, my best of the month. Oh my God, March was a busy month. So let me see if I can run through some of these for you. And I'll talk about them again, of course, in the future. I did wear French Defense from Mind Games. I layered it with something that I have completely forgotten, but it was like a mind blowing combination. And I'm angry with myself that I don't remember what the other thing was. <laughs> so I wanted to share it with you. This is fabulous on it is on it is. On it is own. It's getting late and I need to wrap this up. 
friends, when I tell you that this is one of the most spectacular cherry fragrances, like of all time, <laughs> I think what I love about this is that it's a deep, almost sticky cherry. There's liquor in here, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not looking at the notes, but I believe there's a, a nice, strong, almost like a cherry cordial accord with some kind of liquor. Ooh, it's a nice boozy fragrance and it has a deep ambery base, if I remember correctly, which I love about this. So it's very sort of sensual and sexy and alluring and captivating. It like maybe sort of takes your breath away when you first spray it like, oh, or gives you some pause like, ooh, ooh, what is it that I'm sniffing here? <laughs> so, you know, super pricey fragrance. If you can find this on sale, definitely get whatever discount you can get on it. Some of the major retailers will have site-wide sales of like 15% off, 20% off or whatever, like Bloomingdale's and those types of places. That might be your best bet. Otherwise, you can use Veronica 10 on Mind Games for 10% off. That's still pricey, friends, but this is beautiful and, in my opinion, worth it with good longevity, not all day, but definitely a nice long wear and nicely projecting and alluring. I mean, people are, like, intrigued with this fragrance when they smell it on you. So this is a definite winner. Speaking of complex fragrances that really are attention getters and crowd pleasers, this is a more daring fragrance, and I'm not sure it would be for everyone Definitely a sample first type of situation. This is Infinity from Montal. I do like this beautiful midnight blue bottle. A lot of people pick up a cherry accord in this. I will say there is a little bit of fruitiness that I pick up now more than maybe when I first tried it. This for me is like a combo of vanilla and oud and like warm spiciness. And it feels really good on when you wear it. And it's nicely projecting, mega long lasting. And it has a lot of sex appeal. It's like a daring type of sex appeal and definitely unisex. Although I don't think for me that this comes across masculine. I mean, I think people would associate this bottle and maybe the notes with being masculine. There's a tobacco note in there as well, but I just think it comes off as a very sort of captivating, mysterious 007 type of vibe that could be pulled off by ladies and gentlemen alike. Lovely and fantastic performance. As you know, I fell in love with this when I sampled it and promised to get a bottle and I did get a bottle. Oh. How cute is this? Kitschy, cute, and maybe a little bit tacky too, but I like it. <laughs> uh, Daisy Wild from Marc Jacobs. Oh, we have, look, we got two daisies in the lineup. I didn't even realize that. How y'all doing? That's like them talking to each other or something. <laughs> I love the stems that are so, or what's supposed to look like stems coming down into this vase. Super duper kitschy and cute. The fragrance is a lot of people pick up an apple note. For me, it is like grapefruit plus apple, plus some sweetness, plus some muskiness, plus maybe like some woodiness deep in the background. I'm not looking at notes, right? I like this. I like that it's fresh and it's crisp. It's a very crisp, fresh feeling with definitely some fruity and citrusy aspects and just nice, really nice for spring and summer. This got a lot of attention in my house when I wore it. Everyone loved it and thought I smelled just good. You smell really good, mom. You smell really good, wife. People wanted to come in for hugs with this. It's like you're put together in your most fresh spring way. <laughs> really, really neat fragrance. Like that a lot. And good performance. This lasted on me all day. My scent of the day today is My Way Nectar. I went ahead and picked up a bottle. I was tempted to pick up the big bottle, but I went for the 1.7 ounce. And this one is, I can't say it is long lasting. I would say by about lunchtime today, I wasn't smelling a whole bunch of it anymore. I had like wafts of it. But look, I sprayed this on. Oh my God, that is so good. Hold on. Can we just have a moment for how pretty? This is like pretty, 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 pretty girl fragrance here. It smells how the bottle looks. It's pear and it's florals. Pear's having a moment apparently in this video. It's white florals in particular alongside that pear, a hint of citrus, a little bit of woodiness in the base. There's tuberose in the fragrance as well, but I feel like pear and like sweet florals are the primary sort of notes slash accords that you would pick up on this. I do like the color of the bottle and I feel like the tone of the pink here is how this fragrance smells. It's almost like watery, aquatic, pear, floral, slightly citrus experience. Really delightful crowd pleasing. It's hard to go wrong with this. And again, got compliments here in my house. <laughs> Y'all, I keep saying that if you're new to my channel, because I work from home and sometimes I don't get out during the day. So the compliments that I get are here in this house. And I'm very happy with that when that happens.
Another nice surprise for the month that I really, really enjoyed wearing, and one of our fragrance friends here put me onto this. He sent me a, a really generous travel spray of this, Patrick. Hey, guy, hey. This is Lucrethia from Quinto Canto. Wow. He described this as smelling like a longer lasting, stronger black opium. And when I first tried this from the travel spray that he sent, I thought, I'm not sure that I get that from me. It's almost like this clean herbal essence, shampoo-y type of scent. And you know, since I've worn it, I totally get it. Absolutely. This is like a very much stronger, more projecting original black opium type of smell. Although I will say that I get something in the neighborhood of like a clean, nearly soapy herbal essence type of nuance on top of that. So it's like those two things smashed together, really appealing, crowd pleasing type of scent has lots of sort of feminine, round, robust contours to it. I like this and it lasted quite a long time and projected nicely and it's smooth. It just has this sort of like, like if you took the highest grit of sandpaper and sanded something down and it gives you like the smoothest baby butt feeling. <laughs> this is like the baby butt of the equivalent of that type of feeling in a fragrance. It was so smooth on me. It felt like just like this masterful, delicious blend. I love this. This is fantastic. I'll even forgive the bottle, <laughs> which you've heard me talk about in other videos, and the velvet on it, which I think is an atrocious choice for fragrance bottles, but it's worth it. This is so, so beautiful. Another fragrance that I just loved wearing this month, it really is so good and deserving for me of the hype that it has gotten and hasn't gotten lately. Like People don't talk about this fragrance as much anymore. This is Fire at Will from Javoy. Goodness gracious, listen up vanilla lovers. This is one to have in your collection. So when I first purchased this, it was mostly vanilla to me, like a nice, a really nice, like subtly sexy fragrance in a cozy kind of way. Is there like a sexy cozy category? That type of deal. And other folks talked about getting a lot of brown sugar in it. I've had this for a while. And when I wore it this month, I finally got a really strong, sweet brown sugar accord in the fragrance. Yes, I do definitely get that. Almost like this, uh, like a powdery version of what brown sugar smells like fresh out of the bag, like that sort of molasses smell mixed with powder. I like it so, so much. This is really nice on skin. It's like this soft, subtle vixen, like a the subtle vixen in the cashmere sweater. Almost like this soft, wispy cloud of amazing femininity over your skin. It has that sort of sensual effect. And then perhaps one of my very favorite wears of the month, both because of the bottle experience and the scent itself. This is called Whispers of Truth. And so this is the limited edition bottle, which is pricier than the regular Whispers of Truth because it has sort of extra embellishments on the cap of it. It's hard to pick up here on camera, but there are all these sort of extra crystals on it that you wouldn't get on the regular one. And of course you have your Swarovski crystals around the rim and all of that, and this beautiful glass bottom here. So I am surprised by how much I enjoyed this fragrance. I liked it when I sampled it and thought, I definitely would like a cupcake of that. That's what these bottles are called from House of Sillage. We refer to them as the cupcakes. I love, especially for spring here, really all year round, but spring and fall, and I can see this really playing nicely in winter. I would wear this in summer, but it would have to be a day when I knew I was gonna end up in air conditioning. I couldn't wear this out in the heat all day. It's like a heavy, musky citrus scent. The citrus is so delightful in here. It's like a sweet citrus. That's very pleasing to me. There aren't any wood notes listed for this, but if I had to say what it smelled like to me, it's like it has a really soft, subtle, woody base with a heavy heaping dose of a very pleasant light musk. And then on top of that, a beautiful layer of a sweet citrus with touches of tartness as well. There's something just so appealing about this fragrance and easy to wear for me. And one that leaves me in a very delightful cloud of scent. There are some florals in the fragrance too, but what I would say I primarily pick up in the opening is a nice grapefruit. And then that grapefruit, the tartness of the grapefruit starts to settle down into a more sweet citrus with that musk and hints of woodiness. And it's just a really fantastic combination. And I really enjoy looking at this bottle. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. I'm happy. Leave me alone. Who remembers that audio? <laughs> from Instagram. I don't know if it's making the rounds anymore, but it makes me think about that. Really, really delightful.
I have kept y'all long enough. If you are still there, can you leave me some stars in the comments so I know that you made it all the way to the end and I appreciate you if you did. Thank you so much for joining me for the monthly awards. I will see you in the next video. Take care and keep smelling fabulous, friends.